Welcome to Road to Billions Podcast, the mentality of an entrepreneur. With your host, Moise Bertrand. Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Moise Bertrand, your host of Road to Billions Podcast. It's been an amazing journey. You know, it's been an amazing journey, you guys, and I tell you guys that every episode, um, just because I want to remind you guys that the journey doesn't have to be perfect, and the journey is never going to be perfect, but everything that happened up until this moment was perfect. It happened the way it's supposed to happen. It happened because it needed to happen, and, you know, it leads you to the place you are right, right now in your life. You know, whatever decisions you made in your past, you know, is an influence in your future, so I try to tell people, like, stay on the right journey, stay on the positivity side of things, and don't really get caught up in the whole, you know, needing to get things done right now. You know, it's a journey. It doesn't have to get done this very instant. And, you know, I just want to share my experience because recently, um, the 7th, this past weekend, this Saturday, I went to one of my favorite artist concerts. You know, it's my first time seeing, you know, this artist in concert in person. And I live in the same city, you know, as this person now. He moved here. And for a lot of you guys who don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about Kevin Gates, you know. So I went to Kevin Gates' concert, man, only the General's tour. And it was an amazing experience. Like, I really got to experience, like, you know how sometimes you you see somebody on TV so many times and you hear about them, you read about them, and you watch them to a point where where you see them in person, it just feels so unreal. Like, not on groupy shit, you're like, oh, shit, this is, you feel me? It's like a real motherfucker. You feel me? But... Man, the, the energy was beautiful, man, because it was this point of time where he just gave his um, personal story about, you know, overcoming challenges, you know, and overcoming, like, depression, overcoming things that a lot of people don't speak about. And, you know, getting cheated on, like, losing money in life, like, getting ripped over and stuff like that. A lot of things people could relate to. He talked about that. And when I tell you it was those, it felt sincere, I was like, yo, this man is really on some, like, high awakening spiritual, you know, ascension. And, I want to be in that same type of realm. You know, I want to be in that same type of, like, convoy. And, you know, that's why I try to deliver, like, the highest positivity messages out there. I try to keep my vibration high as soon as, like, as much as possible because it's not easy. You know, it's not something that I could say, hey, this is me. You feel me? This is this is me wholeheartedly. You feel me? I'm not trying to be someone I'm not. I'm being who I am. And, you know, when I'm going into this podcast, it's about to talk about the 10K, how to make your first 10K. And your first 10K is going to come from believing you can make $10,000 first and foremost. You know, this podcast isn't about just making money. This podcast isn't about just um, telling you how to operate and open up businesses. My podcast is first and foremost God, you know, faith. So you're not going to ever be successful if you don't have the two. You feel me? Like you could, whoever you pray to, you give me, and whatever you believe in, you got to have faith. And... I personally put my faith in God, you know, and I put my faith in knowing that thing is going to work out. So you got to have that vision of the 10,000 being in your hand, being in your account, being anywhere you believe it because it, it's, it's supposed to be. It's going to be, be there in your possession. But a lot of people lose a glimpse of that 10,000 because they never had it. So they don't really know the feeling. They don't really know the, how to really visualize it because that's not something that's been new to them. Right, that's not something that's new. That's not something old to them. It's it's something fairly new. So, you want to first think about like what is it that you're going to do to get your first ten thousand dollars, right? And your first ten thousand is going to come quickest from real estate. And I tell people that all the time because people are like, man, I don't know how to get into real estate. I don't know. And this is why I'm telling you guys, come to my classes. You know, I'm having I'm having free classes on my story. You know, I don't be bullshit. And I tell people all the time, come to the classes. Three, four people come. Ten people come. You know, those people come learn. We do deals outside of Instagram. I don't post. Shit goes well. Like, we don't we don't even talk about it. You know, I keep it real player. So it's like, I try to tell people, listen, you don't have to believe me. But when you continue to see me scale up, you're going to ask me, how did I do it? And I'm going to be like, I've been telling you guys this for the longest. You get me? So real estate is going to be a best bet. I'm just saying, I'm speaking in general for real estate. I'm not speaking for any other industry. But every industry shares the same common goal. And that you, you pretty much got to scale and have an idea, a plan of how you're going to get that 10000 So for real estate specifically, you have something called wholesaling. You have something called cash out refinance. If you don't want to use any of your money, I would recommend you use your business um, credit. If you don't have any business credit, go ahead and start an LLC. 
open a, um, get an EIN number, go to the bank, and then apply for a business credit card. Also, get you some personal credit card, you know, just for your own benefit. You don't have to blow through it, but just have personal credit as well. And, you know, for the business credit card, you want to think about it like this. What are you going to do to flip that money? Because sometimes when you're doing something called wholesaling in real estate, you got to put money down, right, to secure the house. It's called an earnest. I'll talk about this in other episodes. And you got to think about, is that the money you're going to spend at your own personal account or are you going to have somebody else put the money down? But what if you don't have a buyer? So, you know, when you're wholesaling real estate, you can make your first five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand, 20,000, whatever. And you can make it so fast to a point where you're going to, you're going to think it's unbelievable, right? You're going to think it's, it's fake. So wholesaling real estate is pretty much saying, hey, listen, I'm going to go buy this house for $100,000. And I'm going to sign a contract with the person selling the house, the seller. Me and this person have an agreement saying I'm going to put down $1,500 in five days to secure this contract for 30 days, to make this contract valid for 30 days. If I don't put the $1,500 down after five days, this contract is void. So I put the $1,500 down, whether it's somebody else's money or my money, and then at that point, whoever I'm selling it to, I have to go ahead and have a contract between me And them now. You get me? So you're creating a chain of events, a chain of instruction, a chain of command. So let me come, let me, let me reverse that a little big bat for you guys. When you're buying a house, you're buying it personally. When you're wholesaling the house, it sounds just like it. It sounds just like what it says. You're wholesaling it. So I'm going straight to the seller. And then now the seller is quote unquote the plug right? The plug, the head, whatever you want to call this person. They say, hey, listen, Mo, I'm going to give you this house for $100,000. And I said, all right, cool. I'm going to buy it for $100,000. I'm going to put down $1,500. Bam. I go to this next person. I'm like, hey, listen, I got this house in XYZ. It's it's about to go crazy like in this market. I think you should buy it. I sell it for $110,000, right? This is now an assignable contract. This contract has been assigned to someone else. So when this person say, let's do it, I say, cool. My new contract will say my company name to this person's name. And then this person is going to have on their contract purchase price $110,000. Right? So now you have a whole bag coming to you. And you didn't even have to lift a finger, right? You didn't have to call a lender. You didn't have to get an appraisal done. None of this came out your pocket. This was just something that you found and you was able to execute, right? Your first 10000 may not come in a huge lump sum like that. It may have to be divided into two different plays. Shit, three different plays, four different plays. It doesn't matter. But the whole fact that matter is small numbers add up. And I try to tell people, like, think about it like this. For every 2000 you had, I doubled it, right? How fast would you get to 10000 Think about that. Fairly quickly, right? You make 2000 I say, you know what, I'm going to give you another two. That's four, bam. You make another two, I give you another two. That's, that's four, that's eight, bam. So now you're making all this money, and you're realizing all you have to do is just set things in motion prior because the 10000 is not going to come in that very first month. It may not come in that very second month. It may not come in that third month. But you have to understand, like, that type of money in one big lump sum is going to take a little bit of due diligence, and you're going to think a little bit smarter about how to really get to it because you don't need yourself feeling worn out or tired out, right? You're going to always wake up to knowing that someone out there needs a house. There's an investor right there that doesn't know how to buy a house, that doesn't know how to run a deal, that doesn't know how to do nothing. And then you're the only person who has the skill and expertise to flip this money for this person. You have the skills and expertise to find these deals for these type of people. So you got to use your experience 
and skills to help and make this type of money for these type of people. But how are you going to get your skills and, um, and experience up? By doing what I just told you. You got to understand that patience is the name of the game. A lot of people want to get into real estate, make 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000. You could do all that. That's cool. You could do that. I'm telling you guys, I promise you could do all those numbers. I wouldn't lie to you. But what I'm not going to lie to you is you're not going to make that 10,000 as fast as you would if you was to just, I don't know, hit the lottery or some shit. You're not going to make it fast. Some people hit first time. I was able to hit a few times on my first wholesale deals. Like everything went through. Crazy enough, you feel me? But what I'm saying is, you got to understand what you want out in life. You got to understand if you want to do 10,000 selling hair, how, how much you got to do? How much, how much hair you got to do a day to make that 10 bands to add up to that 10K? If you sell shirts, how many shirts and stuff you got to sell to make that 10K? How much deals you got to run, you know, to make 10K? If you sell cars, how many cars you got to make? How many cars you got to sell to get that commission of $10,000? You got to think about scaling people. You got to visualize it already being in your possession. You got to visualize it coming in. You got to know that you deserve it. You know, sometimes I sit back and I'm like, damn, I deserve everything that God gives me because at one point I was fucked up. So I'm not going to be, you know, stuck on like the 10,000. I need to make it. I need to make it. It's going to come when it needs to come. I set out the intention out there, right? I already set up the plan. It's like a coach drawing up the action play. Like a coach is drawn up the play before the play happens. He has to play like the play is already going to happen, right? He has to play for the worst case scenario. He can't just be attached to the end goal of how that play could work out because the play may always go another way, right? The player that the ball is supposed to get to, the person who end up getting the ball may just get open and that person who end up getting the ball, what I'm saying is the person who got the ball They were supposed to pass it to the next wide open person for the real game winning shot. But that person got double teamed. So now it's up to you to make the final shot. It could go any other way. That's what I'm saying. You could still make the shot and still win for the team. He could have made the shot and still won for the team. Either way, you got there, you got it done one way or the other, right? It wasn't pretty, but you got it done. So what I'm saying is think about it. Think about working hard, not for yourself, but for like the people who want to see you win. You know, think about working hard for, like, the things you want to buy for yourself that you initially couldn't buy. Think about working hard for the things that you always wanted in life, but you was always too afraid to get it because money wasn't always a factor. Money always been an issue. The clothes, the places, the people you want to meet, the things you want to wear, like, the, the, the things you want to eat, all these things. This is, this is money. This is, this is what life is about. This is, a, this is about experiences. This is about seeing things for what it is and not being constricted to one perspective you know I never seen no one yeah they say I was people be saying they were the happiest when they broke no you weren't you were happy because you didn't have no responsibilities for them but that doesn't mean you were happy that just means you were content because that's all you knew but you weren't you were happy when that bread started dropping your account every month it started going up you were happy when you were buying new cars and going to these different places don't let these people capture you folks when people say they were the happiest when they were brokers. They just meant that life wasn't too much pressure on them, right? Because we always want to live life a little bit. Everybody want to live life at ease. No one wants to feel pressure. No one wants to wake up by alarm clock at 7 a.m., 6.30 a.m. No one wants to wake up being dreaded by someone yelling at them. No one wants to hear that shit. Like, at the end of the day, no one wants to do any of that. So what I tell people is you got to have a plan. You got to have the plan. You got to have the plan in motion. And you're going to have to find the house that people really can't find and you got to execute those houses and get those on the contracts and get those to other investors. How are you going to find investors? By buying tickets to network events. How are you going to find investors? By networking with other investors in um, real estate events. How are you going to find investors? By just randomly sparking up conversations with people. You know, tell them what you do. You know, so I tell people all the time, like, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. Because at times I wasn't able to um, go up in life if I didn't know certain people. You know, yeah, I made it on my own, you feel me, at the end of the day. But what I'm saying is the knowledge that was given to me, I was taught this knowledge. You know, I was taught this knowledge from various people and just getting information from people and picking people's brains just because it's like it's easy for me to say, hey, listen, I don't know what I'm doing, but I like what you're doing. How do you do it? And teach me how to do it. 
And if you don't want to teach me, I'm going to still learn. But the fact of the matter is I like going to the head. You know, I like wholesaling the information. I like getting that information to myself and wholesaling it to the community, which is obviously charity work because I don't try to get, I don't charge people for it as I should or as other people should. I just really say, listen, if you want to come to my class, come. If you want one-on-one mentor- mentorship, that's a whole other ball game. But we talk about like real shit. I talk about real life advice and real life scenarios that goes on in everyday people life that you need to first have a plan of action. You need to have somebody on your side that's going to know what they're doing if you don't know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, you got to go hard because no one's going to say, hey, listen, here's a $20,000 check. Here's a $10,000 check. Here's a $5,000 check. No one gives a fuck. No one will ever give a fuck. You feel me? So get out your head that people are going to come save you. Get out your head that someone's going to come put you on. Get out your head that someone's going to come like be like, hey, listen, you're the chosen one. I'm going to teach you everything I know. No one's going to do that shit. You feel me? So it's genuine people like me who are still trying to give out that information to like people like you guys this, that doesn't really know anything about real estate because now when I speak to people about real estate, they don't understand what's going on in the real estate market because they're not in real estate. But I always tell people, did you ever go down in your rent? Did you pay 1700 this year? Then did you pay 1600 next year? Oh, no. That, you, exactly. So how could you say real estate is going to crash? If anything, people's afraid of what rent going to be next year in the following year, the next five years. So what I'm telling you guys is that's the only thing you got to worry about. If you're refinancing the house, make sure that the house is actually bought at a good market condition and under market price. And then if you could do that, not only for yourself, you could run those numbers for somebody else and do all the extra work that they would have been doing. All you're doing is wholesaling that information. Listen, this is the dynamics of the house. This house is a 3-1. You can rent it out for $1,400. It's 900 square foot. You know, it has um, obviously three bathrooms, one bath. I mean, three bedrooms, one bath, um, one full bath. has a nice stainless steel kitchen, you know, quartz, you know, countertops and all that good stuff. You start describing the whole house to somebody, you, you tell them, hey, listen, you can rent it out to the students over here, or you can put it on Section 8 HUD housing. Either or, you have a plan of action. If you don't want to do that, you can sell it. If you don't want to, if you don't want to sell it, put somebody in there. Bam, refinance it, get your money out. Now you can go buy another house. So you give somebody like who's buying the house all type of alternatives to understand like what they're doing isn't a bad decision. What they're about to purchase is a great asset. What they're about to invest in is going to forever be a long-term play. And if it's not a long-term play, it's a short-term play that's going to be lucrative. So as a wholesaler, your job is not just finding a house and saying, here, you want to buy this shit? Because I could just do that. Your job is to break the information down to a point where Somebody in the fifth grade, tenth grade could read it and be like, oh, so you're buying it for this? Oh, you put $20,000 into this? Oh, you can rent it out for this? Oh, this is how much you're going to make per month on this? This is how much it's going to be worth after here? This is where it's located. This is the plan. I can sell it. I can refinance. What's the refinance? They give me a percentage of whatever the new appraisal amount is going to be. How much is the mortgage right now on it? Okay, cool. What the new appraisal amount is going to be? That's going to pay off the mortgage. All right, bet. How much return of interest I'm going to get per year on it? All right, 5 to 10%. Cool, I can go up to rent. So you start breaking all this information now. You're creating a proposal for this person, right? You're giving somebody an uh, infographic about what's going on. You're telling somebody, hey, listen, this is what's going on with this house. You need to buy it because this market is going up and appreciation is beautiful. So I want you guys to make 10, 20, 100, 40, like all this type of money. I want to be making millions a month. You feel me? And it's going to happen. And I'm just telling you guys, I just want you guys to follow the journey. I want you guys to create your own spiritual journey. I want you guys to understand that the passion that you have for whatever you do is going to break you. It's going to bring you the money regardless. Don't let nobody bullshit you now because there was times where I was fucked up and I was like, man, I don't know how she's going to save me. And things always came right back to real estate on God. Like it always came right back to like, Mo, you know what you need to do. Mo, you have the skills for this. Why are you fucking around, jumping around and trying to make money in other places that you know you're not skilled in and you don't have no strength in, you're burning yourself. So like I was telling you guys at the end of the day, I'm very transparent. I want you guys to win. I want you guys to be able to shoot your parents some money. I want you guys to take care of your family because the older I get, the more I realize how important having a father is. You feel me? My dad passed away July 8th. Um, so July 19th, I'm sorry. But it was just one of those things where um, I always wanted to like show my dad, hey, listen, I'm, I'm doing the things that you always told me to do. You know, I was always afraid at one point to actually, like, man up. You know, because I feel like every man goes to a period of life where they don't understand if they're going to make enough woman, enough money to take care of a woman or 
you know, have a family on their own. And, um, you know, I don't like the whole... I don't I don't like the whole gender stereotypes that's been going around and shit like that. All this bullshit like, oh, should men take care of a woman fully? Like if I fuck with you, I'm gonna take care of you fully. You feel me? Like I don't gotta worry about you. You don't gotta worry about pulling out your debit card and credit card and shit. If you do some fuck shit to me, that's just you. You you up out the window. But me generally, I believe in a man that's providing. I believe in a woman just nurturing. You feel me? You just let her do what she do best and you just do what you do best. You feel me? And you gotta be able to get in that mindset and my dad always told me, hey, listen, bro, like, make sure you find you a good mitchie, which is a career, and um, make sure you just go hard. And, like, just make sure you try to be respectful and be honest as much as possible. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. You know, focus on yourself. And I kind of, that kind of always stuck with me. You feel me? Like, stay in there. Like, hang in there. And um, I'm very much appreciative of all the people who came in my life and who taught me all the knowledge I need to know because I'm not someone who's going to be um, – negligent with the information like I don't I don't like harboring information because I like teaching people you know I generally like sitting there and giving people advice and teaching people what to do and mentoring people and seeing people work go from start to finish and watching it like knowing that I was a part of that journey is a beautiful thing knowing that I created a plant a seed in your mind I planted a seed in your mind that grew into generational wealth not only for myself but for yourself it's a beautiful experience so it's like I try to tell you guys I try to I don't try to preach or come down to you guys' throat too much, but I want you guys to really take everything that you do serious, whether it's your own career, whether it's your own passion, whether it's your own hobby. Take it serious because at one point, real estate was a hobby for me. Like, I just thought that one house was enough. I just thought that I was going to be able to limit myself to one house. And, you know, it's not until I started finding other lucrative ways to make money in real estate that I realized that the only thing that's going to stop you from, lim- from like, reaching your goals is your limits is your limiting belief. So, like I said, the sky is the limit. But for me, I'm trying to, I'm trying to go astronomical. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to go beyond the Milky Way. I'm trying to go beyond what people see with their naked eye, what people is imagine, what people could, can't, people can't fathom of, of me accomplishing. I need to accomplish everything. Just to let you guys know, everything is possible. You know, building our moist. I'm checking out. And once again, I appreciate you guys for listening to Roller Building's podcast, listening to my other episodes. It's been an amazing journey. Say hi to your parents for me. Make sure you guys cuddle up in this weather. You know, it's getting cold. Hold on to your boyfriend. Hold on to your girlfriend. Hold on to your fiance. Hold on to your husband. We almost into 2024. Don't let them go too much. Don't let them go. And other than that, check my other episodes out once again. Appreciate you guys.